everyone. Welcome to our continued webinar series, Building Project Schedules with Project for the Web and the Project Accelerator. Pretty excited to uh, take you into this part of the journey. We're starting to see an evolution of the project scheduling technologies. And what'll be fun is we're gonna learn about how you can build a project, whether you're starting just local, uh, independently, or if you're thinking about more of an enterprise approach. So this session obviously will give you a good hands-on grasp of some of the tools that you have that are the latest in the Microsoft Arsenal. So tell you what, let me just take us into this. Let me share my screen and just kind of walk us through a little bit of what we're going to be able to use and build uh, in this journey in managing schedules. So when we think in terms of the overall structure of what typically will happen in a project schedule, you find that you deal with project management, program management, portfolio management resources, and of course, there's a whole abundance of different technologies. Well, at AdvisorCon, we get to wrestle through these, figure out what's the right combination, how to put best of breed together. And so I encourage you, if you have questions after this, reach out anytime. In fact, we'll have continued posts, uh, webinars, and even on our Thinkific channel, which has got free PDUs, uh, we just help to continue to communicate that information for you. About me, uh, I am uh, Tim Runcie. I've been, uh, gosh, a speaker and presenter and a product MVP for many years. And so I always like blazing new trails with some of the latest scheduling technologies and helping to figure out what makes best sense for you. So today we're gonna be looking at how to certainly build and start kind of from a project schedule perspective. Whether you're working through a detailed or a complex schedule, we're gonna learn about some of the latest tools in the structure. Uh, we're going to jump right into mostly demo. I want to help you guys understand what are the mechanisms to build, start, kind of manage some of these pieces, as well as we're going to take a side journey into a little bit more of what I call the enterprise environment, which still uses Project for the Web to help schedule and manage, or as Microsoft engineering team calls it, project. But the Accelerator is a power app that's designed to help you speed up that process and begin to roll out enterprise level fields. So whether you move into project operations, maybe down in the future, which already has a lot of this uh, type of component build out, but maybe you're not ready for the dynamics uh, size and weight, and you need something a little bit midterm, or if you're just starting out with projects, you're gonna find some great tricks here. So let's take a look at the Microsoft landscape in terms of the strategic fit of the project technology. So as we think in terms of the ecosystem, and I really wanna call that the task ecosystem, is that you have places where you can go in and say, hey, listen, Alexa, find me this, or make track of that, or you have artificial intelligence that's starting to capture your tasks from emails. Uh, you may find that you're in a lot of different types of information where you're jotting notes down or checklist. And so we talk about what's called a task hub and the project technologies, which you call hero apps, sit kind of smack dab in the center. You'll notice that there's different sizes. So we think about Outlook using to do now as a simple checklist in Microsoft Teams being a hub that we can put a lot of this information in, or perhaps you're just using task list to manage that information. A lot of it we look at is that growing evolution from simple task management to, hey, we're working as a team, more of a team or a work effort where we bring other people into it, we have assignments, but maybe we're not talking about dependencies. Today, our focus is gonna be on the project side of the house, project for the web, and certainly looking at the enterprise bundling that's starting to come together and be available. So remember, Microsoft launched project for the web as a stopgap, or at least the next generational launch of the project scheduling technology. So we think about simple work management, which we find in Planner versus the legacy Microsoft Project Professional, the desktop, which will be around for a very, very long time, to the project server, or the enterprise edition. Project for the Web was designed to kind of be the next generation, bringing some of the lightweight care and feeding and easy to use, but also with the ability to bundle those into a little bit more of an enterprise approach. So enough of me talking about project technologies, which I can certainly do all day, let me drill directly into our environment so we can take a look at this. Let me bring up project and uh, let's just kind of start with our landing page. So first off, a lot of times you're gonna need to enable the right type of uh, solution. So whether it's project or project for the web, we call that plan one in terms of licensing. And again, Microsoft changes the names as we work with these, but plan one, plan three, plan five uh, is really the product licensing. And the ability to see this is important. 
So some things that you're going to see today not only come free from GitHub, which you can download the Power BI report packs or even the accelerator, but you have to pull them down and then deploy them into your environment. So the standard landing page, once you have project in place, which you would click on and select, hey, I want to launch into project, takes you to kind of what we call the mobile center here, where basically we can decide if you've got project online down here at the bottom, or if you want to build a roadmap, which I'll talk about just briefly for a moment, or if you want to even take some of your desktop files and import those in and begin to work with project for the web, you're going to find that it is very quick and easy to leverage these. And again, having favorites or recent ones or things that were shared or created by you. Again, a quick navigation portal for you to organize your project schedules. Now remember, if we go and click and decide to create a new roadmap, the roadmap tool really is looking across the project technologies and says, I can bring in these milestones or summary tasks into a view. And so you can put in your own dates, you can move in and pull in different activities. It looks at the time phase data and allows you to share this, which is great because I don't actually have to build a timeline view and then copy and paste or export it. I can share this. And of course, there are no license required for sharing. But the idea for building and using these will come out of that project scheduling tool. So our first up today, we're going to talk about Project for the Web. And I think this is important to understand that the latest features, the latest investment that Microsoft will continue to build out and grow is this P4W, Project for the Web. And the idea is that you have this awesome opportunity to build within a grid view. You can certainly launch into a Kanban view, which a lot of you guys have seen in Planner, uh, certainly exist in Project Desktop, but this is a web browser view. Or you can move into a timeline view using that predecessor successor relationships and dependencies and manage this. Again, all of this is a schedule and allows us to work with that. So whether I want to increase or decrease the durations or shorten, a lot of flexibility and ease of use for end users, which is why it's catching on so fast. So in terms of having different levels of setting these up, or we talk about the enterprise piece, just remember that Microsoft is making a lot of this accessible and available and we'll certainly build and grow from there. But let's start with a new project. So let me go ahead and just click on blank new project and I'll just kind of launch this here. So no matter what you're working on, you actually have some flavors that we can actually decide how we want to build. So in this case, I have an untitled project and I'll go ahead and just click on that. And we're gonna go ahead and call this, well, let's do it this way, using project for the web hyphen P4W. And again, I get to figure out who is the project manager, who's kind of the all up owner of this. So I'll put my name in here. And again, connected to Active Directory allows you to pull in all your exchange information. And in this case, I'm not gonna start on the six, I'll start at last week. And again, high level information here. And again, you can decide whether you wanna pull in different calendars, which you can go and set up ahead of time. But really the idea is I'm just gonna use my default working template. Now, once I start here, you'll notice that we can add tasks. So if I wanna think in terms of simplicity, I can certainly add a new task. In fact, let me just add a couple here. So I'll just call this planning phase. Uh, hit the enter key and you can continue to type here. So planning, perhaps uh, what we wanna do is now that our project's approved, is we wanna get into build. Oh, we'll call it build, test, deploy. And those are very high level summary activities. And we'll talk about subtasks here in a moment. But again, I'm in a grid view and I've got just a couple columns showing, nothing fancy, but we can always add more columns later, whether it's uh, buckets. And again, you can choose which bucket you're looking at here. I can also hide these columns. Effort, effort that's completed, meaning talking about actual effort, meaning hours or work or effort that's gone into it. How much is remaining? And we have just a few columns that we're able to work with, including something called the quick look, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. But for right now, I want that duration column to be right here. I'm gonna actually think a little bit more about how I wanna set these up and I want quick look to be on the left. So easy navigation, set that up. But then again, I'm still in kind of this uh, fluid form. I'd like to actually organize this in what we call a Kanban-esque environment, a little bit more of an agile feel to that. So might here, I might just call this my backlog, meaning that this is all the stuff that I need to do. I haven't just kind of figured out where it's gonna go. And so this might be, a planning phase, right? We had a summary task, but I could also say this bucket might be priority level, right? So maybe this is a high priority. I wanna make sure this gets done first. Then we'll just say normal, 
priority. Priority, here we go. And then finally, mate, here I wanna say this is a part of a sprint, right? This could be sprint one, sprint two, sprint X. Again, the idea is that I can sit here, I could rename these, I can move them around and delete them. But inherently, it's that I can have a way to organize my information. And whether I'm doing it in an agile fashion or you've got post-it notes on the whiteboard, you're moving around to categories, all easy to work with. Notice I have test, build, and planning phase. So maybe I'll move this over to planning or maybe testing is gonna happen in sprint one. But I can organize the information of what we're working on directly here. Each one of these cards, if you will, or tasks, if I click on them, flies open and I'm able to actually assign this to different people. Now, right now I haven't brought anybody into this schedule other than the fact that I've created it. So if I click on assign, I wanna say, hey, listen, let's go ahead and add, let's put David here. And David's gonna wonder, what am I actually doing? So let's add David. It says, hey, listen, I need to create a security group. And the beautiful thing is that this uses the same structure that Microsoft Teams Planner does in the background using those security groups. So absolutely, in fact, if I want to, I could actually choose different groups if I wanted to add this. But the idea is I'm gonna use it in this security group, give it a different name or description, but let me just go ahead and create it. And now I've added David, it's just that easy. And here, if I wanna come in and say, listen, let's go ahead and assign that to me. There we go and David. So I can mix and match on some of these tasks in terms of adding or managing them. Now remember, we're putting in information for us to help organize this, but maybe you like that grid view that says, well, while I'm in here, maybe I wanna add a few additional activities. So I can press the insert key just on my keyboard and in planning, we're gonna go ahead and create communication. Communication. Plan, here we go, too many N's and O's. Uh, under build, obviously I can get into adding additional sub activities. In fact, if I want to, I can also indent these. Notice if I click on the ellipses, I can actually make it a subtask and I can organize these. So in terms of having details, I actually have plenty of information in terms of what I'm viewing. And the idea is whether I'm building the Kanban, the Gantt view, certainly helpful. But let's put some durations in here. So let's say we have five days Buildings can take 10 days, and I'm thinking that test and deploy might be six. In fact, I may want to break these into other details. And as you continue to type, you can move down and continue to enter. Maybe I have a fairly detailed communications plan. So if I open the details here, or if I just click on it and launch into it, not only can I add notes, but I can say, hey, we're tracking E fields, C, www.risks. Uh, Dot com for the information. And here's a hyperlink, here's a note. Uh, perhaps I may wanna put in some bullets. So I can type in a dash and say, uh, checklist one, checklist two. And I can break these down, including adding even attachments. So once I create the security group, it actually launches a SharePoint site behind the scenes. And so literally I'm just building a schedule here and I can say, hey, let's go grab some files. Uh, let's pull a few things out of our documentation. In fact, if I run out here, maybe I do want to bring in a communication plans template. So let me open that and add it. And you'll notice while I'm adding and making these modifications here, you'll see my quick look actually allows me to quickly see the note or I can launch and view the attachment. So quick look allows me to visualize these. In fact, you can open them, you can edit and remove these. You can have multiple attachments but inherently the idea is that we're building and managing our activities. Again, if I want to add a milestone here, I'll just call this project complete, because I don't think you want to see me type for eight hours, project complete. It's looking at a duration. But at this point, I'm just creating kind of a list. Maybe I'm organizing by bucket. But if I move into a timeline view here, I can begin to say, hey, listen, before we start doing anything, let's talk about our linkages or our dependencies. And maybe after I create my communication plan, I wanna to start to build. And so you can drag and link these together. When I get to the end here, I can also come back and say, listen, I think it's gonna be important for us to test and deploy. So putting that right on the predecessor successor relationship is helpful, or as we call that depends on and depends after in the new version of project. And again, easy for me to come down here and manage my dependencies, including instead of typing the duration, you can kind of move these together. 
So as Microsoft continues to build out here, it literally is just these number of steps to set up phases and tasks and activities and add new ones. And again, creating some of those relationships. If you go back to your grid, you can always add those columns, including, hey, let's talk about the depends on and the predecessor or success relation depends after. And what I like here is notice how Microsoft starts narrowing the list that happens to be in here, including if I want to add my buckets, I can see these. Now, while you're in here building, it's great that you can also add your own columns. In fact, you notice here, I've got just some of these standard columns, percent complete. Oh, hey, I want that percent complete to be marked over here. I want to kind of see it as I'm moving or using these. And inherently, as long as I drag them in the same row and drop them off, you can manage these directly in terms of seeing the visualization and also making sure the details open up. So if I want to put an effort, actuals are remaining. And so listen, I'm thinking that uh, I've got a total of, oh, we'll say 10 hours here. I've done four hours remaining. And of course, I can get in here and say maybe six hours complete, uh, depending on what I'm clicking and typing. Of course, I'm typing in different numbers but it'll start adding these up. So if I've got 0% complete, project's gonna start figuring out what percentage is for me. So if I say 10 hours remaining, 10 hours complete, it'll calculate directly for me. And as I start managing these or putting actuals remaining, project will work here. We'll talk about some more advanced functions where you can kind of set the type of task this is. And again, Microsoft will add some of those fixed work, fixed units, fixed duration dependencies uh, directly in here. So 10 hours completed, six hours remaining tells me where I'm at. And again, I can manage these directly. You can also just click right here to check it off, mark it done. And uh, in terms of our visualization, you'll notice there's a little sparkle that'll come out, makes a little ding, moves up and updates the summary task for us and we can see these visually. Now, what's nice about what you're learning right now is that building a schedule, whether you're in project operations or we're gonna talk about uh, the Accelerator app, it uses this base foundation to work with. And so it's helpful for us to see that, including if you wanna add your own columns. For example, I may wanna come in here and say, I'd like to have my own text field, or perhaps I wanna have a target date, or maybe I want a choice, which is a lookup. And so if I'm coming in here and I say, hey, listen, uh, we're gonna go ahead and call this priority. And in my choices, I might wanna backspace here and you can say high, medium or low, or better yet, let's just use some symbols here. So if I take and use my, let's see, my windows key and my semicolon, or here we go, windows, I can get these little emojis. And then I can come down here and play with different symbols, including if I wanna look at all kinds of, this is a high priority. And then maybe this might be medium, right? Well, let's just use that same option that we had before here. And uh, let's go down and grab a green. And let's add a yellow. So again, I like this is that this is all localized. And of course, everything that we're creating here as we pull this information in is specific to your schedule. Now, some people go, well, Tim, I've got 40 schedules that I manage. I'd like to have the same column or the same field across the board. How do I want to manage or how do I want to use these? Well, if you're going to do that, we're going to get into a very different choice in terms of how we structure it, but the schedule will still be the same. So again, we've got stoplight reporting. Maybe this is the priority. This could be the status. And again, quickly and simply just to begin building and managing. Does not take a lot of effort to learn this, but it also is important to understand that there's a lot more details that will continue to pour in here and update. So whether I'm adding notes, adding effort, or adding attachments, or perhaps even just adding my own custom fields, you'll notice that there's not that many moving parts, and that is the goal, to create a time-phased schedule that allows us to assign people work. And here's the great thing, as we build these, if you download the Power BI report pack, there's an entire report pack that's just gonna look at your tenant. It's gonna look at all of these schedules that you're building and working with it. So you can have kind of a view that looks across the information. Again, if you make a mess, your reports are gonna show a mess, but inherently, whether it's my own personal work and my assignments and where they're at and whether I'm ahead or behind, or if I wanna go over to a high level timeline view and look at the activities, Again, this lets me look at some of that information and some of the schedules that we put built and put out there. 
Now, this isn't it. This is just if you're working on a local project, you've got kind of the task building, you could certainly pull that information into a roadmap, but more appropriately, as you're beginning to work and build, it's designed to be quick, simple, efficient, and it is about for co-authoring. People can come in here, and the last person who makes a change to that same task basically wins. So you can have people working on the top, the bottom, it's recalculating, and it's updating. People can own different sections. And again, the idea is that I have some of that visibility to manage from. But what if we have to have everything kind of in a bundle? Uh, maybe we're not ready to go to project online, or maybe you're not ready for project operations, which truly is an enterprise project management environment. What can we do? Well, the Microsoft team has basically built and deployed a uh, something called an accelerator. In fact, let me show that to you right now. So this is called the project app, or some people refer to it as the project accelerator. And its intent is not to be the end all be all of everything. In fact, this is a power app. It is a model driven power app that says, hey, look, I can see the fields and I can allow us to create kind of our own structure or deploy a enterprise resource pool, deploy enterprise custom fields, group things together by program or portfolio budget. And so Microsoft's made a pass at this and they put this out for free. So if you want to begin maturing that process, you certainly can go and take a look at that. But the idea is that if the simple schedule is working great for you, you like the report pack, but then you find, hey, I'd like to see things that are connected together, this will be the next progression for you to work with. So let's take a look on how to build and use using the Project Accelerator. So first off, you're going to download this from GitHub, right? You need to build it and deploy it. In fact, I think there's a couple updates that's happened in the last six months. So Microsoft will continue to update the bits. You simply will deploy that, turn that on into your environment. Uh, we might have a separate session on how to go through that process, but either way, is if you're having problems, let us know. This is what we do on an ongoing basis is help people kind of turn these things on and configure them. But you notice here it says Power Apps in the upper left-hand corner. This truly is leveraging the Power Platform. Remember, Power Platform is Power BI, Power Automate, or what used to be called Flow, and Power Apps. Kind of this low code, no code, and in some case, when I say low code, no code, it can get into high code, depending on what you're trying to build. But the idea is that, that we have a little bit more of a collection that we can put together. So let's look at the navigation real quickly, assuming that this is something that might tickle your fancy or thinking, you know, I've got all these projects, I'd like to kind of fold them in. So the way that this is structured, as you look, we have this environment, which is on the left-hand side here, our left navigation. Uh, back in SharePoint, we call this the quick access toolbar. And the idea is that we have our left nav, which says, hey, I can look at the home environment. Uh, I can go to the last recent projects that I've worked with. I can certainly go into perhaps things I pinned. So if you actually go into a project and you like what you're working on, you can go through and say, hey, listen, uh, this is my active project. I'd like to make sure that these actually get flagged or pinned. So as I drill into the details here, I go into editing these, I have a lot of options that I can manage. So again, I can look at the business case of a project. Remember, we didn't see business case back in starting up the schedule, or perhaps I have financials, or I'm looking at risks and issues, right? These are all things that are designed for us to launch, save, and update, especially in the project side. But as I'm looking here, you'll notice that we have a home page, which gets a little bit of an active view. Again, you have financial summaries, program help. That's a new term, right? Using a program to bring a collection of projects together. And normally this starts in with what we call the request center. So when I go to the request center, I can actually start creating a request. Certain project requests, things that are inactive. I can look at my proposals, but this is a great place for people to begin to fill out the request for work, kind of an intake process to manage. Again, as you notice here in the grouping that I can go and say group them by, you know, basically project type. And so I can expand and collapse kind of what we call a mini portfolio of, hey, here's what's going on, internal readiness. But the nice thing is that I've got a good view and I can pin these together, basically pin my favorite or we call system views. Then if you decide, we can actually go into the program center and create a new program. Notice very simple, we've got a, a menu bar here at the top here, this little toolbar that runs across the top, it sits across to every view. And again, in a model-driven app, this is really connected to the environment and it uses the common structure that's available. If you decided to create a power app that was a canvas-driven app, meaning you kind of went in and had a blank canvas, made it pretty, color-coded, put pictures, 
layout changes. You can certainly do a lot in terms of formatting. And so that's both the two dimensions of Power Apps, as we call model-driven or a Canvas app. In this case, it's a model-driven app, but it allows us to come in and say, listen, if I want to create a new program, I can put what is the group? What's the state? Is it active? Is on hold? I can view the information, start, finish. What's the business case? I can put financials, and maybe we have a budget that we have to figure out which projects are the ones that we work with. And so again, you can always turn on Power Automate and use uh, Workflow if you're looking for it. But the idea is that if I come in here, I can launch in and say, well, let's take a look at our internal projects. And I can look at the overall financial budgets. I can look at the benefit analysis information. I can see where we're at with the existing projects. And I can look at what particular items are associated with that. Here, notice that I can filter. Hey, listen, let's find all the B projects. Okay, let's unfilter those. Let's find the A's. So again, in terms of our visualization, there's quite a lot here that we can certainly view. Uh, we can select these and modify the information or click on all to see what's there. But again, we're talking about a little bit more of an enterprise environment. The same thing goes, though, if I want to begin or work in a project. If I come down here, you'll notice that I certainly can go to all my projects, what's open or closed. And if I went back to the overall program, I can get into the active program, but I can also look at things that are saying, hey, I've got views that are a little bit more helpful for me in terms of sorting and filtering the overall information. What I also like about this is that even from the homepage, a lot of people are not aware of this, is that you can create a knowledge management environment, meaning that you can create little KPIs or how to's You can talk about program management here, but the idea is you can load up information that will help you have a knowledge uh, to share with anybody coming into your environment. Now we were back at projects and I, before I drill into that and show you the kind of the conclusion of both the reporting and the project schedule building, another really important piece is our ability to use resources. Now think about that for a moment. We have been using Active Directory resources, meaning that anybody in your organization can see their tasks, see their assignments, but what if I have generic resources? I have contact, I've got resources that don't have a role, I have different ways of building my, what I call system views here, but perhaps I'm looking for an analyst and I have four analysts, I need to know, figure out which one it is, but when I start with a template, I'm able to start in a place that says, I have a common resource pool that will look across these. And what's helpful about that is as I select any one of these resources, so if I click on poor Adam Barr here, uh, I can see here he is, he's part of the resource crew type. I can set the hours of availability, working, not working. And you can modify these, but the idea is that you have your resources in a place that shows you the information. If I click on a generic, again, same thing. Here's a generic resource. I'm gonna give you the overall time zone availability. This is beginning to set the stage of what we call that resource capacity planning with that workload demand. Now, let's peek at some projects so you can kind of see these. So first of all, let me go and I'm going to say all projects. And if I want to jump into this asset tracking system that I'm working with here, I can simply select it and click on edit. And from here, you'll notice it says, wow, there's a lot more information that we make available kind of uniformly as part of the program, the business case, the issues and risks. And when I click on tasks here, let's see if you recognize this. Well, launching inside of our view here is a list of tasks. And you can see here, I've got analysis, I've got identity target, I've got summary tasks, and I can work in that uh, board view, the timeline view, or a grid view, depending on what you're working with. So again, this is that Microsoft product for the web, completely embedded, but it's available to add additional layers in terms of structuring, building, and managing your projects. Of course, as you go in and you decide to progress things using the timeline view, you can kind of zoom in and zoom out. I can see where these are at. I can modify the dates here. Same thing, same process, but we're doing it inside of our Power App, basically using inside of our Project Accelerator. Now, of course, as you build and manage these and assign resources and put an effort and work, uh, you can come down here and click on Reports. And what this does is it leverages that Power Platform together to say, hey, look, I'm looking for those Power BI Report Pack that we talked about separately with Project for the Web. So if I wanna now see a few things saying, here's our request dashboard, or I'd like to go into the overall program health, or maybe I'm looking at a portfolio as you start organizing, grouping, project and initiatives. And of course, links will take you right back to wherever that project is. So I might wanna look at timelines in the portfolio. Where are my issues and risks? Where are these at? 
As I click on these, you'll notice that this is really collecting the information from all the projects because we begin to standardize across all of them using the same enterprise type fields versus local customized fields that we certainly can create. What I like about this is that your end users can come in here as well, and maybe they don't have permission to edit or change, but if they want to see their work or their overall timeline of activities that are scheduled, they can come in here and they could, let's see, uh, they can move through and they can find their work or assignments depending on the time period I select. There we go. So I'll pick the time period or the time window that I want to visualize in, and I can see my assignments and look at the activities in the different projects that we pulled in here. So again, fun to kind of create these, model these, manage these, but again, the Project Accelerator is there. Uh, if you decide to do even more customization, it is a power app, and that's what you typically will have a technical or development resource get in, kind of configure for you. So today I've kind of shown you kind of a stretch across both just starting simple using Project for the Web or rolling all the way into issues and risks and portfolio and program views, but the idea is that this information is available for you. Microsoft has made uh, the, some of the Power BI report backs and certainly the uh, custom dashboard or the uh, Power App itself also on GitHub, you can pull those down. But I love the fact that it doesn't take a lot to start doing schedule building. So let's return and uh, let's just kind of recap some of the things that we saw today. Hopefully this is educational, at least helping you understand how you can get started and perhaps which path you want to take or whenever you're ready to be able to migrate and go into the next step. So first off, remember that you can enable Project for the Web, turn on the right licensing, go get it. Um, if you want full co-authorship, people editing at the same time, drawing directly from Active Directory and having that lightweight feel, Project for the Web is a great fit. The second part of that is that if you begin to think about maybe organizing your project into collections or bundles, this is where we start to think about a little bit more of, do I go all the way up to project operations and dynamics, or can we use a power app, basically the project accelerator, help maybe close that gap as we continue our maturation process. And again, you can download these from free from the GitHub environment. Uh, if you need help, that's something that we actually do for clients all the time, including the training, the configuration. But the idea is that Project for the Web is light, its customization is localized, but the uplift to get started does not take much time. In fact, you'll be able to very soon migrate your planner boards directly into Project for the Web. We can already bring in the Microsoft project schedule and drop that in here, the old desktop version. Just remember that's like going from a 5,000 square foot home with four car garages and a swimming pool down to a three bedroom apartment. So the idea is that Microsoft says, we don't have all those things in here yet, but inherently the idea is maybe we don't need a lot of that stuff. We can actually use this and work in a web browser environment. If you truly are looking to launch into the next phase, meaning talking about the enterprise approach, then definitely the project app or the project accelerator is a great way to mold, uh, model and get in and use this. However, remember that if you wanna start customizing, this is kind of where you get into a little bit more of the technical hurdle of just making sure that you go in and you're gonna start building or rebuilding that power app from the environment. Well, I hope today was helpful in helping you understand how you could start managing time phase schedules and doing schedule management in terms of building and some of the path or the opportunities. Uh, I recognize that all of you are kind of uh, learning and growing. And so sometimes some tools are better than others and you'll figure out what that looks like. But if you ever have questions or if you wanna to continue to see additional videos on this, check us out at www.advisacon.thinkific.com free web environment. In fact, we actually post uh, PDUs for some of the videos that we create. So this is kind of our way to continue to communicate with a worldwide audience and to give back. And if, of course, if you need help or if you want to reach out with questions, send me a note anytime. From myself and from the rest of the AdvisorCon team, hopefully this was helpful for you. Take care.